Well, hello everyone. This is Joe Tortonesi coming to you. Welcome to Joe's Drum Shop. Um, today we're actually going to be getting into a brand new book. Uh, the last show we finished up uh, Drums 1, Songbook 2. Um, so this is the new one. I'm going to show you that right now. This is Drums 2 only, not a songbook yet. There will be two books continued after this. So it'll be Drums 2, Songbook 1, and then Drums uh, 2, Songbook 2. Um, so what we've done in the past, if this is your first time seeing the show, um, we went through quite a few shows now, and we went through this book. This is called Drums 1, just kind of like Drums 2, but again, this is the beginning stages of learning to read music, learning to play, getting coordination, all the beginning uh, things that we had to do to get started. And again, if you ever have drum lessons, that's this is how you want to get started is a book like this. Um, then once we got through this book and we got through a lot of the patterns and different fills and different things that we had to do to get into the next book, which would be Drums 1, Songbook 1. So here's Songbook 1. I want to show you all the books at the beginning here so that you can see how far we've come. Um, again, if this is your first show, I've done quite a few. And hopefully maybe, you know, if they do some repeats on, on for the Windat Cable, they'll, you'll be able to see it again on some of the earlier shows, some of these other ones, okay? So this is Drums 1, Songbook 1. And then they have Drums 1, Songbook 2. So this is a whole series of drum books that you can get. They're pretty inexpensive. They um, either come with a CD um, or they come with MP3s that you can download from a particular website from Hal Leonard. Hal Leonard's the company that puts this uh, nice little set together. And there is one more book that we won't get into yet, but down the road, once we get through Drums 1, uh, dr Drums 2, and then Songbook uh, one in Drums 2, Songbook 2, there's one more book. It's just called The Rock Drum Book, and it's more of the updated uh, songs. A lot of these songs that were in the earlier uh, Songbook 1 and Songbook 2 were earlier stuff from the 50s, the 60s, you know, 70s, that kind of thing. And then as we get through all the books, the last one is a little bit more up to date, kind of giving you an idea of like maybe Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, also trying to think of some of the other ones. Um, but anyway, they're, they're really good. Um, they're, like I said, it's a really good series. Um, today we're going to start into Drums 2. So here it is. This is what it looks like. Uh, it's put out by Hal Leonard. And again, this one has the audio tracks that you download from the Internet. Uh, it's about a $10 book, so you can kind of find this on, on the web, sometimes like on Amazon or some other music uh, websites. All right, so let's get started. Um, the basic thing of this, it says um, we're going to do more beats and fills, rock, blues, and funk styles, linear drumming, um, and there's also 96 songs and examples. So this book is going to be really helpful, getting us a little bit farther into reading music, doing different patterns, doing stuff that we haven't done before. Now, the very beginning of the book actually does go over the stuff that we've kind of been through a little bit. So it does give you a little bit of a recap. Um, so I'm looking on here on page two, if you happen to have this book uh, on page two, it starts off, it says, let's get organized. And basically what it's talking about is the drum set. Now, when we talk about the drum set, we have, this is a, a standard basic drum set. Of course, this is not your average drum set because... Notice the shells are not on there. We don't have any shells to the drums. These are a special, special kind of uh, uh, drum set where the uh, rim, and sometimes they call these the rim drum sets or the name of the, the brand name of this. Um, so it's basically three toms, a bass, and a snare, your hi-hats, your crash cymbal, another crash cymbal, a little bit bigger crash cymbal, and then your ride cymbal. And this is pretty much the basic set that you need. Now, what the first page of this book is going to tell you about is that there's different types of things that you can add to the drum set. I'll give you an example, um, if you wanted to add like a cowbell later, or maybe later on you want to add a tambourine, or you want to put mics on the drums. These are different things that you can add on to the drum set. Okay. 
Um, so it basically, when you first open the book, it explains what each drum is. And again, I'll go over that. Um, this is the snare drum. This is uh, the heartbeat of the whole drum set right here is the snare. And then it goes on to the first tom, second tom, and then the third tom. Sometimes they call this the floor tom because sometimes the tom over here on a regular set has three legs. So it sits on the floor, and that's where it gets its name from, floor tom. And, of course, your bass drum, um, pretty much that's it. Uh, of course, hi-hats. Uh, these are 13-inch. Usually 14s are the standard sizes, so these are a little bit smaller. Um, this is a 14-inch uh, crash, and I have a 16-inch crash and an 18-inch ride cymbal. Usually the ride cymbal is about 20 inches, or you can get you know bigger ones, 22, 20, 24. Uh, I wouldn't go too big, but I think 24 is usually the standard that, like, if you got into, like, uh, Led Zeppelin, let's say, uh, Led Zeppelin, he had a 24-inch ride. But some other bands might have a 22-inch ride, and maybe some other bands had a 20-inch ride. So, again, these are kind of a smaller, this is a smaller kit. Um, it's a nice, you know, extra set. It's almost like a practice set. It's not as loud as a regular drum set, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but let's start off. We, we kind of go, we're going to go through all of the rock beats here. Um, again, the notes are on the same spot. So your bass drum, your snare drum, your bass drum is going to be on the bottom space. Snare drum is going to be on the second space from the top. And then your high tom here is going to be on the first space. Then this is going to be on the second line. And then the floor tom is going to be on the third space and so forth. Now the cymbals, uh, the ride cymbal will always be in the line. Again, remember, it's going to have an X for cymbals. And with the ride cymbal, it's in the line. There'll be a line going through the X. But if it doesn't have that and it's sitting on top of the line like this, then it's going to be the hi-hat. Okay? And then anything above that with an X and the through it and it's raised above, it's going to be a crash cymbal or you could use this crash as well. So let's start off with the very first one. This is getting back to basics now. They're going to call this, this is on page three, lesson one. It says, you want to rock. So we're going to rock today. Uh, it's an early rock beat. I would consider this more like a 50s style uh, rock beat. And that's kind of where it came from. And it's going to start off with eight notes playing on the hi-hat. So we'll start that off slow. One and two and three and four and just like that, and keep that going for a little bit, okay? And then the bass drum and snare drums will play quarter notes and some eighth notes. So we're going to start off with this beat. I'll give a little count first. I'll play it twice. One, two, ready, go. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two. All right, so we are on that same one again. I'm going to play it again, but a little bit faster. So we'll start off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. Now we're going to go and add some things to those. Uh, this next beat is going to be a little bit busier with the foot. And again, Pretty much all of these next four rock beats are going to be the hi-hat plays eighth notes. Um, the fourth one that I'll give a demonstration will have an opening on hi-hat. So remember, opening a hi-hat, you have to hit it, and then you let your foot off after you hit it. Because if you try to hit it as you open it, it doesn't, it doesn't give you a nice full opening sound. you got to hit it first, and then open it up as you, as you hit it. Like that. All right, the very first one. Here it sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, next one. Down below underneath that one. Uh, it's going to be actually very similar to the last pattern we just did as the early rock. For some reason, they put it in again. 
Uh, but again, it's it's the the standard rock beat from the 50s. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. All right, the third one, a little bit more now. We're going to get some double bass going with the uh, foot. So we have two bass drums on three and, and then we'll also have a snare drum on four and. So double the snare drum as well. So this will sound like this. One, two, ready. And then the last one, this is the one that's going to be with the hi-hat opening, okay? It's on the and of four. So what we're doing is we're playing the hi-hat opening. One and two and three and four and. Again, remember it's on the and of four. One and two and three and four and. And we'll add the bass drums and the snare drums. They're playing eighth notes and one quarter note on the snare on four. So here we go again, eighth notes on the hi-hat. One. Two, ready, go. One and two and three and four. 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 Page three is done. We move on. All right, we're going to do some related rock beats. They call these related because these are the next step, the next evolution. The pattern started to get a little bit more complex as time went on. Uh, we could probably say these are from the 70s, um, maybe 80s you could say too. Uh, again, these are very popular beats. Um, you might even know as I play these patterns, you might even know some songs that go, wait a minute, that sounds like certain song, you know. And it's exactly what it is. They're very, they're very popular. So let me start off with, uh, they have them set up now as letter A, B, C, and D, and that's the way we're going to do these. I'll do the first one. Uh, here's number one. Two, ready, go. One, two, three, and four. 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 All right. Letter B. This one's going to be with a 16th note on the uh of beat two with the snare drum. And we're going to play eighth notes and some eighth notes on the bass drums, and of course a quarter note on the bass and snare as well. So let's hear what this one sounds like. One, two, ready, go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and four. And again, you can do it a little easier like I'm doing. I'm counting it one, two, a three, and four. But you could also count it as 16th notes, which are 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. And the way I like to count that sometimes for students so they get the understanding of how the snare drum is supposed to fall on that last one, because remember, we're dealing with 16th notes. When you deal with 16th notes, you're always dealing with four. You're dealing with the number, the E, the and, and the uh. So that's the way this works. So when I count it, it's like 1 and 2, 2 E and a. And then you hit that. One and two e and a. One and two e and a. Again, one more time. One and two e and a. Okay. Uh, we're going to go on to letter C. Uh, it has the same thing on beat two. It's going to have that a uh on there. See how that kind of jumps really quick? Because sixteenth notes are faster, so they have to play faster. Just because you play the beat slower, they the sixteenths have to be in their spot. The eighth notes have to be in their spot. Quarter notes have to be in their spot. So let's try this out, letter C. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. All right, last one for the related rock beats. This one is going to get a little bit more spicy. We're going to add another 16th note on the snare drum. So it gets a little bit more of what they used to call a boogaloo beat. Boogaloo beat was something from the 60s where they would play the snare a, quite a few times in a row, creating kind of like a, uh, a little more of a dance type feel beat. Okay, and that's the boogaloo is actually a good kind of a dancing kind of a, 
a, a pattern that would play with the so song that would make you kind of want to get up and dance a little bit. So let's hear what D sounds like. One, two, ready, go. All right, now, I, of course, at the end of some of these, I've been opening up the hi-hat. It's not written there, but that's something that I just threw in just to kind of get the feel. And, and then a lot of students, when I teach drums, they always know when to stop when they hear that little hi-hat opening and close at the end. All right, we're going to go to what they call the straight four rock. Now we're kind of getting more into the 60s. Um, this kind of a beat was definitely in Motown. Uh, they used it, of course, uh, with the Rolling Stones. Uh, if you know the Stones song called um, uh, Can't Get No Satisfaction, this beat is played through that whole song. It doesn't even play fills. It doesn't do anything, but it plays this. And I like to use this for students that are learning this pattern for the first time and have them try to play all the way through the song at the speed of the original you know, uh, song which was by the Stones, and it's, uh, it's pretty fast, but what's also important is that you keep that hi-hat going. It can't stop. It's got to go for two, almost three minutes, because that's how long the song is. But as that's going on, the snare drum and the bass drum are playing together. Now, a lot of times what happens is the bass and snare are separate. You know, you might hear like an ACDC beat, you might hear like one, two, three, four, where everything's separate. But this is having, having you actually play it together, the bass and snare play together. And that's where you hear that sometimes on some Motown uh, hits. So here we go, Let's, here's what this sounds like. Straight four rock beat, here we go. Two, ready, go. All right, I'm going to play that again because sometimes, like I said, some of the hit songs actually play a lot faster than that, uh, similar to like the Rolling Stones or some of the uh, Motown stuff. So this is going to sound a little bit faster. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And probably just hearing that beat, you know exactly uh, there's a lot of songs that are doing that pattern. So. All right, let's take a look. Speaking of the Rolling Stones, we're going to talk about this guy, this drummer guy that used to play for the Rolling Stones named Charlie Watts. And they're not going to tell you this in here uh, too much. They just say that they mentioned his name, Charlie Watts. He played for the Stones. Um, but a lot of guys uh, after Charlie, they, were, they liked using this, this style. And I'm going to explain to you what this is. So whenever you play like Charlie Watts, first of all, Charlie Watts would play traditional. Remember I showed this in the very beginning uh, book. You can play traditional or you can play match grip. Remember, traditional is taking your thumb, placing it over the uh, stick like this. Two fingers are on the top, two fingers underneath, like so. Kind of show the camera so you can see it. And that's how you hold it. Notice I'm holding it back farther. You don't want to hold it too far back, but just little bit more left of in instead of in the center hold it a little bit farther to the left of center and then your right stick is going to be thumb on the first uh thumb on the side and your first finger wrapped around the stick and you just kind of hold it really lightly okay just really lightly and again this is the way charlie watts would play now one of the things that charlie watts did was whenever he would hit the snare drum he would stop the hi-hat it was a weird thing they asked him about it. Um, basically, all he said was that, you know, I learned, learned to play that way, and that was the way he always it just felt comfortable for him. But then later on, they found out that uh, when he would record, that when you hit the hi-hat, you know, as you're playing the hi-hat and you hit the snare together, they kind of, you know, meld the sound together. And sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want just a snare sound. And so when he would hit the hi-hat, and just as he's getting ready to hit the snare, the hi-hat would stop. He'd hit a solid snare sound. So you could really hear that snare in the recordings really good. And 
Again, I'm going to get, demonstrate this really slow at first, and then we'll kind of speed it up a little bit. So again, what he would do, I'll play it slow. Here we go. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Play it again. One. Okay, so we'll play it up to speed now. One, two, ready, go. One and two and two and four and one and two and two and four and one and two and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five. All right, as you can see, it's a it's a different way to play. It's something you know. It's kind of just all Charlie Charlie Watts was the guy that kind of invented this style, um, and it's been pointed out in this drum book, so that's obviously important. Um, I actually got to speak with uh, Kenny Arnoff, who was John Cougar's drummer, and Kenny Arnoff was playing exclusively like that for a while, and I think right now, lately, he's been playing match grip, but he used to play that way, and I asked him why he you know, switched to traditional grip, and he was saying because of Charlie Watts, so I knew he was a big fan of Charlie Watts too, and there's there's a lot of people out there that are you know big fans of the Beatles, and of course the Rolling Stones, the Who, a lot of the British acts, and a lot of times they would play traditional grip, and that was important for them. They just they felt like that was the way you know tradition was, so they kept the tradition going. All right, so let's go on to the next page. We're on page five of Drums Two. We're going to be talking about another guy, another guy called Bo Diddley. Now, Bo Diddley wasn't a drummer, but he played certain rhythms on his guitar. He was a guitar player. And back in the 50s, this song, it was called the Bo Diddley Beat, and it was a song called Bo Diddley named after him. And the pattern basically was with kind of a Latin-flavored clave. A clave is kind of some sticks that go together, and they kind of you know make this kind of a clink sound. And the way he would play it, this little accent, I'm going to play it like a click, and then we'll do it like the way it says on the snare here. But it would sound like this. It would go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'll play it a little bit faster. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Okay? Now, if I play that in the snare, it's the same thing, but it'll be a little bit louder. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay. Now, they're going to add it to the floor tom this time. And if you notice on letter A, if you have the book, it's called Bow Nose Beats. And what this is talking about is they're playing eighth notes on the floor tom. Now, if I play just eighth notes on the floor tom, one and two. That gets pretty monotonous. It really does. It's it's just because the drum's not doing anything else. It's just playing that same continuous pattern over and over. But what if we added some accents? Now, what an accent is, is a note that you play a little harder than the other ones. So sometimes you're going to play heavy. Sometimes you're going to play light. And if we put it in those spots where I played the snare drum and then played that click, if we put those uh, accents right there, it's going to give a different sound to the drum as it plays. So we're going to play that right now, and it's going to sound like this. One, two, ready, go. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and two, and three, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and two, and three, and two, and three, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and two, and three, and four, and one, 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 and two, and three, and four, Thing. They're going to play it on the floor, Tom. They're going to do the accents. They'll add a few extra accents to it. And they're also going to put a bass drum. The bass drum will go to add a little bit more to the accents as well, giving it even a, a bigger and fuller sound. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'll play it slow. One and two. OK? 
okay? If I play a little bit faster, it'll sound like this. Right? Pretty cool tune, pretty cool beat. And that's what made this song so popular is because nobody ever heard a beat like that before. Everybody was doing beats with the hi-hat, snare, and bass. And here he was, his drummer was playing it with the floor tom. Pretty interesting. Okay, now a lot of times, um, it also says here in this gray box area, there's a thing called the shakers or maracas. And if you've ever seen maracas before, they have a a little bit of a plastic or kind of a, a, a skin type of covering and they hold like this little handles and they have beads inside there and when you shake it it kind of makes a like a rattle sound and they used to use that a lot with this song back in the early days and then later on they started taking that beat and making other songs with it you probably remember if you're you know if you went to high school like I did in the 80s uh, there was a song called I want candy by I think a band called Bow Wow Wow. And they would play this song, I Want Candy, to that pattern. And it was the Bo Diddley beat. They did it a little bit more fancier. They added some really cool guitar licks and they had a girl singing it and it you know, was a big hit. Now, what we're gonna do at the very bottom of page five, we're not done with Bo Diddley yet. We're gonna add these other type of patterns to that, but you're gonna hear still the Bo Diddley beat playing through, even though I'm not playing it on the floor tom, if I add it to the hi-hat, snare, and bass, it'll make a different type of Bo Diddley beat. But again, you'll still hear that Bo Diddley sound. So here's what it sounds like. I'll play these slow. One, two, three, four. You could almost picture the floor tom thing with that rhythm and this beat playing doom, do bop, doom, doom, bop. It just plays really nice. All right, the second uh, variation of that, they're going to play quarter notes. Again, the pattern will be the same, but instead of playing one and two and, we're going to play quarter notes. One, two, three, like that. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. One. All right, and then the last variation example that they give is with 16th notes. Now, I'm looking at this, and what I kind of recognize here is that when the snare drum plays, usually, if you're playing on the hi-hat with one stick playing 16ths and the snare drum's playing with the other, usually they will play together. They'll have a hi-hat playing with the snare drum. Now, here I don't see that. So what that tells me is that when there's no X above the snare drum, that means that you're going to be playing right, left, right, left on the hi-hat because we want to play that a little bit faster. So I'm going to play it without the bass drum. I'll play the hi-hat and the snare part so you can kind of see how it goes. So I'm going to start with the hi-hat first. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. One E and a Again, I'll slow it down even more, really extreme slow, and you'll notice that when I play the snare drum with the right stick, the left comes back to the hi-hat. So it's going to be right, left, 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 right, left. Okay, then we're going to add the bass drum to it. So here's what I'm going to play it slow. Here's the way it sounds. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. All right, that's the end of page five. Let's go on to page six. 
And everything that we've done to date now, um, we are going to be putting into these next two short songs, okay? And the first one's called We Gotta Go. Now, they couldn't use the name of the song, and they couldn't play the song exactly because, again, copyright infringement stuff happening here. But um, it's called We Gotta Go for a Reason because in the song, the original song, um, this was, uh, I'm trying to think by who the band was. I can't remember the band name. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the way this goes, this is actually Louie Louie. And uh, I think it was the Kingsman, if I'm not mistaken. The Kingsman did this song called Louie Louie. And in the song, they say the words, we got to go. So that's kind of how I knew that this was that song. Um, but I'll play this. I'm going to play it slowly, and then I'll play it with the song, and we'll speed it up. So this is kind of like the Louie Louie song, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, and two, and three. Okay, now I'm going to pause it for a second. That was the first line. Notice on the second line, um, it's going to be like this. It's going to play a regular beat, kind of going one and two and three and four and one and two and. And then we're going to do a short little fill, three, e, a four, and. And then it plays those same two measures again. So it's going to go one and two. Okay, next, we're going to still play that beat one more time, but then they have a longer fill, which is on line three, and it's going to do the same thing, one E, a two, and, and then you're going to go up to the first time and go three E and a, and then go over to the floor time, four E and a. So again, the first, that fill, the whole first part of it again is one E, a two, and three E. One more time. One E, a two, and three E, and a four E. Okay, and then we play the beat again. Uh, the beat will have a crash. One and two and three and four. And then the last line, I'll play that all the way through. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three E, and a four and Okay. All right. So that's called We Gotta Go. Let me pull it up and we'll play along with this. And again, it's just kind of like Louie Louie. Here we go. You can see very fun to play um, very interesting fills again it makes that really kind of work with that kind of a beat and those fills just pop and it's awesome very cool song all right we go down to the bottom on page six and this is called hey you again now this is another one this is actually from the rolling stones uh, but it's not called hey you it's called get off my cloud and uh, in the song, it says, hey, you, get off my cloud. <laughs> That's the, the name of the song. But the pattern comes from that song, and that's what we're going to play here. So this is actually a shorter version of it. They just kind of play a real short clip in the book. Um, I'm going to play it for you real slow so you can hear the beats. And it's got very similar fills from the last uh, song that we just did that we got to go. All right, so number six is going to sound like one, Okay, there's the first two measures. 
the third measure or the last measure of that first line is just doing quarter notes again. One, two, three, and four, and. And as we go to the second line, it's playing eighth notes. So don't forget, you're going to switch from playing quarter notes right when you get to the second line, and you're going to play eighth notes. And it's got that interesting fill again. So it's one and two and three and four and. And we still keep playing eighth notes. One, two, three, and four and. One, two, three, and four and. Crash. All right, but wait, there's more. When we play this first line, at the very last measure, there's a double bar, double dot. Now, if you don't remember what that was from past videos, the double bar, double dot means to repeat something from that point down to wherever the other opposite version of the double bar, double dot is, and they want you to play that twice, which happens to be the last, well, just before the last measure, before that crash. You're going to go back to the first line again, but only play the last measure of the first line. Then come down, play the second line again, and then we crash. Okay, so... All the way through, um, I'm going to play it. We'll pull it up here and uh, play it up to speed with the song so you can hear it. Here we go. All right, pretty much that's it. So that is all of chapter one or lesson one. We're going to move on to lesson two. Uh, it's called three for one special. Basically what they're talking about is triplets. Triplets always have to do with the number three. Uh, when we count triplets, instead of playing eighth notes or 16th notes, instead of counting one and two and three and four and, or we're counting 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, we're going to count triplets like this. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and... Uh, it's basically three in a row for each quarter note. So we're putting three notes in where the place of normally two eighth notes go. They put three eighth notes in, but we speed them up just enough to where they take the time just for that quarter note. So that gives you that one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and, uh, and uh, four and... Uh, now, if I play that on the snare drum, triplet demo number one is what this is going to sound like. So it'll sound like one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. Okay? Triplet demo number two, the next one down, is going to have a little bit of variations with quarter notes and eighth notes. So you can kind of hear the different feel between quarter notes, eighth notes, and eighth note triplets. Here's what this sounds like. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and a four. One and two, three and a four. One and a two and a three and four. Okay? And then the last one, ballad triplet beat. We're actually going to put the ride symbol to use now. We're going to play triplets through the, the beat with the ride symbol going one and a two. And then the bass drum will play one and three, snare drum two and four, and here's how this one goes. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a three. All right, that's lesson two. We're on page seven. We're going to be flipping to page eight. All right, uh, slow triplet groove. Now, we're going to take that eighth notes, the triplet eighth notes, and we're going to add some sixteenths to the middle of it. And you're going to get this sound. You're going to get one triplet, two, three triplet, four, and uh, so one triplet, two, three triplet, four. So let's play that with the snare drum. Ready, go.
right, let's play that one more time. I'm gonna play it a little bit faster. Again, this is called the slow triplet groove. It's on page eight of drums two. Let's try it one more time. And then uh, we're gonna end there today with this beat. And then I will catch you next show. Uh, we're gonna be finishing up this page on page eight. And we'll go on to hopefully the rest of uh, that uh, chapter two. And we'll also do chapter three and four next time. All right, so here we go. One, two, ready, go. All right, so that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you for watching Joe's Drum Shop. I hope I uh, showed you some very interesting things on the drums. Hope it inspires you to take lessons. And again, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great one. Keep rocking, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.